Hallelujah. 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 Jesus be magnified in this place. Hallelujah. 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 Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Mm. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. We give honor to God today. And we thank him for who he is and for all that he has done, for what he is doing, and even for what he is yet getting ready to do. He's already done some great things. Amen. But it's not over yet. Hallelujah. And we thank God because he knows who's here. And if you came hungry and expecting, God is here to meet you at your need. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the name of the Lord. And we give God glory and we thank him because he's a mighty God. Amen. And he is the everlasting father. And he is the prince of peace. So if you're in need of peace today, you're in the right place. Because God is peace that lasted. It's everlasting. It's everlasting. God's peace can be bought down by no one. As I was thinking, I was listening to Pastor. Amen. Thank God for Pastor. God bless you, Pastor Bryant. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Amen. And his wife, First Lady, God bless you. They're one. God bless you, First Lady. God bless you. Amen. We love you all. Amen. And we thank God for being back. Amen. In his presence and being back here. And it has been a blessed time in the Lord. And we are so grateful to God for what he is doing. Amen. As I was sitting there, I was just kind of thinking about it. And I didn't realize, I guess, that it was 9-11 until um, we started seeing the different things. And I thought back and I said, my God, that's right. Today is 9-11. And as I began to think about the things that were happening, I was remembering where I was when that occurred, amen. I was working in an office, amen, in a big um, company, for a big company there in Atlanta. And I was working for presidents and vice presidents, and I was sitting in my office at my desk, and when someone first talked about, because we you know, were connected to a lot of that, because we were connected to the transportation and the travel industry, the word first came to us. We were one of the first ones that heard it about how there was a plane flying around that first building. And so when we got the warning, we all turned up and we kicked it up on our internet, on our computers live. And we were watching it and I was sitting there saying, what is this plane doing? Flying around and the next thing we knew, it crashed into the building. And I remember everyone across the whole building began to scream. And I thought, my God, and then there was a panic because then we were thinking, was there multiple planes flying in different places? And we know Atlanta is one of the targets, as well as Washington, D.C. and quite a few others. Our enemies have places that are specifically targets that they will plan to attack if they plan to attack our country. And I sat there, and I remember beginning to pray. And as I sat there and they watched the other plane begin to fly around, and I thought, surely that's not going to hit too. And then when that plane went in, I don't know if any of you were watching it, we were watching it. When that plane went in that building, in the smoke, there was a face. There was a face. It was a demonic face. And we heard the roar of laughter from that face. It was a demonic attack. I thought that maybe I saw something. So, but I wasn't sure. And I asked others. They thought they saw it too. Well, there was a friend of mine that I contacted who worked for the news and also for the Weather Channel. And they had actually had the video clips. And they sent a few of us snap pictures of each scene. And I had the picture where the plane went into the second building and it literally was a face, a demonic face that appeared in the smoke. And we got it on film. And then there was laughter. It was like a big face, its mouth open, and it laughed. It was a demonic attack against this nation. And, it, and I thought about it and I said, my God, against the United Nations. And the Lord said the attack was literally to try to destroy the unity of our nation. Our nation. But I thank God as I thought, looked at it, I said, my God, all the people that were running and the many people that had been lost. And I thought, my God, what are we coming to? Where is this place going? And the Lord spoke peace 
to my heart. There were many there. We had prayer. We stopped in the middle of the workday, and we had prayer in that building. Even some of those that had been warring among each other in the offices, even among the vice presidents, they began to stand together, lock hands, and pray. And it was a sad thing that it took devastation to bring this nation together. But for a very short period, though it was, we were united as one. Didn't matter what color, what race, what creed, we united together. Hallelujah! We united together to help save each other, to help comfort each other. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! There was no division, no ism, nor schisms. People's lives were at stake. Hallelujah. And many lost. So when it came down to the comforting and the bearing, everybody embraced each other. And I thought, my God, does people see, do they understand what happened here? And for quite a little while after that, the nation stood together. But then it took maybe a few more years after that, that people began to wander back into their own little separated, segregated corners. And then these last five years, we've almost forgotten what happened at 9-11. We talk about it, but here we are as a nation beginning to be divided again. Isms and schisms, not understanding that we are American despite the color of our skin, despite the race, despite the creed, despite how we were born. We are Americans. We were born here. We were raised here. This is our country. This nation was built on the foundation of God. And despite how they try to destroy it, how to try to take things out of the Constitution, my husband and I visited the monument this year. And as I stood there and looked at that monument, I said each one of the presidents and the candidate need to come and stand at the base of this monument so they can remember and also be reminded what this nation was built on. Hallelujah! 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 Thank you, Jesus. It wasn't built on discriminations and, and these indiscretions and these things that they're coming up with. It was built. They escaped England because they wanted freedom to serve their God. And when they got here, they began, even though England tried to come over and dominate, but they fought back and they won. Why? So we could have liberty and freedom to raise our children and our nation under God. Hallelujah! 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 And how we forget, how we forget, we think this nation was birthed on one color. Sorry, we was not. There was color before some of the others got here. Hello! So we need to get it right. We're all Americans. And while we're playing around in isms and schisms, those other countries out there have a problem with us. We better learn to unite. We better learn to going back to serving the true and the living God. It's been God that has kept us. It has been God that has kept us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I listen to candidates, one of them in particular, Holland, let's make America great again. What made America great wasn't anything that nobody did. What made America great was God. God made America great because we served him. We had morals. We had character. We had integrity. And we raised our children up that way. So you begin to destroy those foundations? No wonder stuff is going crazy. No wonder they're trying to break down our foundation and destroy the nation from the inside out. And it's nothing but the devil. Nothing but the devil. But we as a people, we as a nation, we've got to raise up 
and we need to continue to serve our God. We've got to unite arm in arm, and we got to begin to bless God because there's been nothing but God that has kept us from war coming to our soil. Other countries have been torn down, blown up, broken up. Israel over there, they're broke up, blown up. People lost homes, losing children, got babies going into the military. We haven't had to do that. Why? Not because we're so great. They could have bombed us any time. It's been God that didn't allow them to touch us. It's been God. It's been God. It's been God. Hallelujah. 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 So we better act like we know and stop trying to kill each other. That's what some of the folks want us to do. Kill each other. Fight about crazy stuff. Really and truly, thank you. It's foolishness. We need to unite. Why? Because when you are united, you'll stand. It is divided, you will fall. Cut each and every one of us. If you cut me, cut you. We all bleed red. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why I don't care about color or race. Actually, if you check our genealogy, cut, check everybody's blood, folks are getting their blood analyzed. You're finding out that some of us have every kind of race in us. Don't matter what color you are, you got a piece of me in you too. Hello. Hallelujah. There is no pure race. There is no pure race. There is no pure race. We are all God's children. And the pure blood that we got is the blood of Jesus. That's what's pure. That's what's pure. That's what's pure. That is what's pure. Hallelujah. 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 The blood of Jesus that washes us, that cleanses us. It is the blood of Jesus that makes us anything. It is the blood of Jesus that can change the hearts of the man. Blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I thank God for his blood because his blood washes, it cleanses, it heals, it reaches, it reaches back from the 42 generations further on back and then come here now and it's still covering us. It's God's blood. Hallelujah. And I bless God for it. Hallelujah. I was thinking about, oh, bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. I was thinking about one of the stories, and there were many stories about the survivors and how they survived. And there were some who were going to work that day and for some reason or another didn't make it. And there was one in particular that stood out that I heard and I thought, oh, my God. The woman said, you know, I was getting up that morning. And she said I was heading to work as she worked in the building that went down. And she said, as I was getting dressed, she said, my nose began to bleed. She said, and I thought at first I could stop it, started putting tissue up in my nose. And she said, the blood started getting heavier and heavier. And she said, and I looked down and she said, my clothes were covered with blood. And she said, I said, oh my God, I can't go to work today. And as she stayed home, she said, a little while later, she looked on her TV. And as she looked on the TV, she said, then she saw the buildings going down. She said, she screamed and thought, oh my God. God, I would have been in that building. I would have been dead and gone. But she said, you know what? And then they asked her later. They said, how is it that you survived? You were supposed to have been at work. What is it that saved you? She said, it was the blood that saved me. She said, I was covered with blood. It was the blood that saved me. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah! God is amazing. God is a mighty God. And God's been having mercy upon America. Why? Because America is not all bad. America is not all contaminated. Those is a lot of mess here. There is a lot of mess here. But at the end of the day, God still has a people in America who are serving him. God still has a people in America who are crying out, who are living for him, who are serving him. God has a people who love him. Hallelujah. 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 
So while people are crying out, God going to destroy America. He going to destroy America. No, he's not. Yeah, he going to punish the ones that are doing what they do. Amen. But he will save his people. He going to cover us. He going to protect us. Why? Because we haven't turned our back on him. We still serve him. We still love him. And we as churches have to unite because we got just as much divisions and isms and schisms. Even in apostolics. From one nation to the other. One side is a black organization and that side is a white organization. We are all children of God. We've got to unite. 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 We got one God. We only got one God. He's not a black God. He's not a white God. He's not a Mexican God. He is God. Hallelujah. And don't believe the pictures that you see. I know y'all got pictures that got colors on them. And, and, and different ones color them according to your race. Hello? <clears throat> God is God. And we need to stop trying to measure him by man, by our thought processes, and by our standards. He created us. We didn't create him. Who said that there is any color? He's a spirit. What color do you think a spirit is? He said he's light. What color is light? Light actually is comprised of all the colors of the rainbow. Hello. He's light. He's light. He's life. He is the word. What color is the word? What color is the word? We got to get off of this stuff. And we've got to get in God. Get our mindsets right. Get our hearts right. Because we're not serving God and we got mess in our hearts for each other. Get it right. Get your heart right. Get your minds right. We're going to serve God. Let's serve him for real. Let's lock arm and arm, neck and neck, and serve our God for real. Hello. Hallelujah. 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 I think there's nothing more beautiful when people can unite and just love one another. And just love one another. And be concerned about each other. You see one down, don't matter who they are, what they are, where they came from, you love on them. Why? Because they're your sister and your brother. That's what we've got to do. That's what we got to go back to. That's who we are. Hallelujah. And I believe it with all my heart. Because that's what God would have us to do. So I'm thanking God for America. And I'm asking God to have mercy on us, amen, in our foolishness, that we will come to a right mindset and understand that we are nothing but clay, dirt rolled up with air and breath blown into us. He created us and not we ourselves. And therefore, there's none that's greater than the other. And we need to all shift our eyes and look to him. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. And if we will all focus on him, hallelujah, because that's what our Congress and our Constitution was built on, focusing on him, then we'll be great. Then we'll be great. This nation will be great because we will be one nation with one mind, one spirit, and one God. Absolutely. One God. Hallelujah. That's what will make us great. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Not lies and deceptions and deceits because I want to get in an office, amen, but truth. We stand for truth, and I bless God for that. So when I think today of 9-11, I think of the nation that God created us to be. And my prayer is that God will not have to have another devastation to come in order for us to unite as one. That it won't even take that. It shouldn't have to take another devastation in order for us, for us to unite together to love one another. And by the grace of God, 
We pray that it won't be. But I understand that people are going to have to line up and get their minds right. Get their minds right. And as churches, those are the things that we need to be praying about. Because it is God, only God, who can change hearts and minds. Only God can change hearts and minds. And then the other thing is, we in the church, we need some hearts and minds changed as well. Because we are the examples of God that they are seeing. And some of us are coming into agreement with some of them. So we've got to show them. We're the examples. We've got to show them. And if we demonstrate it on our jobs in the schools, we stop making the differences. Hello. Because they're here. We ain't going to act like it's the elephant in the room. It's here. But we've got to cut it out and get it right. Get our hearts right. Get our minds right. I don't care how you were raised. Don't care what you thought, what your parents said. They were wrong. They were wrong. They were wrong. Don't care if it's a tradition. I recently was in a store talking to a young lady and found out that the manager was making comments talking about one of the, the assistant managers was a woman of color. And she had made the comment that um, any monkey can keep numbers. I said, Father God, in the name of Jesus. That shouldn't be. That's foolishness. It's demonic. How dare you? None of us are a monkey. I don't think you see no tail flicking off from under anybody. We need to stop the foolishness. That's mess that people, nasty people, evil people talk. And that foolishness needs to quit. It needs to quit. Hallelujah. So my prayer is that we will get real with God, that we will get real with each other, and that we will serve God in truth, in spirit and in truth, in spirit and in truth, in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Because God's word is true. We read his word, we talk his word, but then there are certain areas we still want to make it black and white. It's not. It's not. It's not. And don't get quiet. It's true. It's not. Hallelujah. I love everybody. We've got to love everybody. And we've got to stand together. And I thank God when I look out over this crowd, I thank God what I see. I thank God what I see. I see different colors and different races. And you know what? This is what God is calling for. This is the church. This is the church. This is the church. This is God's church. This is God's church. It's God's church. It's God's church. Hallelujah. And God is love. And God is love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So as we remember today, the devastation that took place, let us pray for the hearts and the minds of each one that we will continue to unite as a people. And that we will pray for our nation for real. And that we will learn to stand together as one. Is that all right? Is that all right? Is that all right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the last thing, the Lord, as I was sitting there and I was hearing the song that I had sang not too long ago. It's an old song, amen, that talks about the high places. And the Lord said, everything that exalts itself above God or the name of God Every high place, he's going to bring it down. He's going to bring it down. He is going to bring it down. Because he said, thou shalt have no other God before me. And there is none greater than him. There is none greater. There is none greater. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, thank you, Jesus. And this song is for America as well. Amen. I know we got a little songs there. Amen. But honestly, we got to understand America, that as long as we keep God in his place, as long as we serve him, he is supreme. He is supreme. And if we will serve him, be that one nation under God, he said, those that rise up against us, he'll bring it down. Don't matter what we walk through, don't matter who come against us, if we serve him, he's going to protect us. He is. Not our machinery, not our soldiers. He is. Now, he'll use them. He'll use them, but ultimately, he is the protection. Hallelujah. I will make the darkness light before thee. What is wrong? I'll make it right before. 
for thee. All thy battles I will fight before thee. And the high places God said I'll bring them down when the oh father i thank you i will make the darkness light i don't want to get ahead of myself before thee all thy battles i will fight before thee and a mansion in the sky I'll give thee in the high places. God said, I'll bring it down. For when thou walkest by the way, Everlasting love, I'll love thee, though with trials deep and strong, I'll prove thee, and there's nothing that can hurt or defeat thee. High places and the high places. God said, I'll bring them down for window. In the sky, I will thee in the high places, and the high places, and the high places. God said, I'll bring them down. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Give God some glory. He's the King of kings. He's the Lord of lords. Bless his name. Let's get our Bibles. We are in the Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. 
Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 3 and 4, we give honor to the presence of the Lord that is so graciously with us. We want to thank God for Pastor and Sister Brian, and thank God for all of you. Thank God for my lovely anointed wife, all of you, the people of God that are here today. Let's allow the Lord to speak to us a little further for a few more, mo for a few more moments. Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 3, verse 4, and as chapter 4, chapter 4, uh, verse 3 and verse 4. You're in, you're in chapter 3. We're in chapter, thank you, chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. The man speaking of the woman says, Thy lips are like a thread of scarlet. Thy speech is calmly. Thy tempers are like a piece of pomegranate within thy locks. Verse 4. Thy neck is like the Tower of David, builded for an armory, whereon there hangs a thousand bucklers, all shields of mighty men. I just want to speak to you for a few moments on this subject. The love affair causes the warfare. The love affair causes the warfare. Would you ask, lift your hands and ask the Lord to speak right now? Father, strengthen us that we may hear your word. Speak to us in our minds and in our spirits. Deal with our concepts and help us to think like you. We thank you for transformation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you as you're seated. The Lord just began to talk to me saying, I want to change your concepts on how you're thinking about battle. Throughout this weekend, there has been a theme of this is war. And I believe that theme is still appropriate even for these services. And so the Lord began to speak to me and said, I want to change your mindset for the reason why there is war. The purpose of war is not simply to conquer. The purpose of war actually originated because of the love affair. It is warfare first started in heaven, and it started because God created angels or beings to worship. Worship is a type of love. In fact, it comes into the fullness of love. And so because of that, warfare broke out. Now, the reason why you're fought, the reason why I am fought, is because of the love affair. It is because God actually created us for the purpose of entering into intimate relationship with us. Intimacy. In, to, me, see. God created us for that purpose and actually designed us so that we are appealing to him. You say, why does God so deal with us? It is because he actually designed us this way, that we would be appealing to him. As a result of this, because the enemy was kicked out of heaven, therefore God said the enemy wants revenge against him. And in order to hurt our hearts, or to hurt really God's heart, the enemy goes after us because we are the apple of God's eye. When you understand that, then you also recognize that the reason why God wants you to fight so hard is because he wants you to preserve the love affair that he originated. And when you recognize that the purpose of the warfare is not just simply so you can be delivered or so you can be made better, the purpose of the warfare is so that you can preserve the love affair that God fought to first give you. Calvary was more than just getting rid of your sins. Calvary was taking care of what blocked the way between God and you. It interfered with the love affair. And so if you notice something, and this is what's so amazing about the Song of Solomon. When the woman describes the man, which typifies the man, typifies God, the woman typifies God's lover, the church. He never, she never really describes him as a warrior. But when the man describes the woman as what we just read, he says, you look like armor. Because the church was made to fight. But the fight, and if you notice this, and I won't go to the next verse because some of you get embarrassed. But the very next verse after that, he describes parts of her body after. After describing that she's like armor, he then moves and describes parts of her body because what he is saying is her beauty is her strength. Under her silk, her femininity is a sword. 
And so what he's getting at is, for you, the reason why you're so beautiful to me is not simply physical appearance, but your beauty is that you know also what you're fighting for. You're fighting to preserve the love affair between you and I. You're not just simply fighting, amen, for no reason or to get more material things. You're fighting because you recognize how valuable I am to you. I wonder if somebody recognizes God so valuable that you're willing to fight. Somebody just lift your hands a moment unto the Lord and just worship him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It is not that we don't have problems or difficulties. We do. Why does God allow us to have problems and difficulties? As Jesus died on the cross and proved that you were worth the fight, so in everyday lives and problems, you are fighting to overcome, to prove that he is worth it in order to have relationship with him. It is not simply about trying to gain the American dream of a new house and, and a car and so many children, whatever 2.2 children are. The, but it's God's dream that you would fight to know who he is and you would fight to have relationship and you would declare to your enemy, no matter what you do, I will love the Lord with all of my heart, with all of my soul, with all of my mind, and with all of my strength. Would you stand to your feet right now? Lift your hands to the Lord, and would you just ask him to help you to love him? Let my love affair cause me to fight. That because I love you so much, I'll fight through depression. I'll fight through fears. I'll fight through worry. I'll fight through debt. I'll fight through difficulties. Because I'm in love with you. Don't let me be so caught up with my grandchildren, so caught up with my children, so caught up with my job, so caught up with my spouse, so caught up with the events of the world that I am distracted from the love affair. The Lord is calling people into this love affair. It begins by repentance in Jesus' name. And also baptism in Jesus' name. Praise and worship team as you're coming right now. God is calling for people that will take on his name in marriage. That will be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. And that will say, I want to live for you that has died for me. Because I love you. God is wanting people that will say yes to an intimate love relationship who are simply not trying to follow rules but who are trying to follow relationship. I do what I do because I love you because I want to please you not because it's some particular rule and if I don't dress a certain way or talk a certain way or do a certain thing then I violated the rules. I dress the way I dress because I dress this way to please you. I talk the way I talk because I talk this way, God, to please you. I fight my own flesh and my own desires because I want to please you. I wonder, does anybody understand salvation? is about a love affair and because of that love affair that's why we have war because anything worth having is worth fighting for God's calling first and foremost for those of you that want salvation you want to come deeper into this love affair and you want to know your God as never before God is also calling for people that have already been saved. You've already been baptized in Jesus' name. You've already been filled with the Holy Ghost. 
but you recognize you have become distracted from this love affair. Distracted by your own mourning over your losses. You're so mourning over the things and the people that you have lost until you're getting distracted over the love affair. You recognize that you're being so pulled, your attention in so many different ways until you're not really focusing on he that loves you. And God said, I'm calling you to come back to the love affair. Remember why you're alive. Remember why I call you to find him. It's so that you may have a relationship with me. Come on, this altar is open to you right now as you sing what the Lord has given you. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. that want to come. Falling in love 